Welcome to the Maria Heller Show, on the net since 2000 and still going strong. If you feel like you're not getting the real news, if you feel like you're not connected spiritually, you have found your home. Maria covers a wide range of topics as only a snarky New Yorker can. Straight up, no chaser. No censorship, no corporate sponsors, thus true freedom of speech. Your subscription gives you unlimited access as a member of the smartest audience on earth. Relax and enjoy the education. Now here's Maria. Hi, good morning world. Maria here, alive and kicking. Welcome to Hell and High Water, where you actually hear two real Americans paying their bills the same way you are, uncensored, unsponsored, who still decide to continue to do what we do because somebody has to do it. Because if we don't counter the fake news, and I hate to say it, it's mostly all fake news, starting from the president to every single station that's caved into Hitler today, uh, the, the, the democracy, republic, whatever you want to call this country, is finished. So on that happy note, let me introduce my wonderful co-host, the man of the hour, the guy who hosts and does all the work at Ocelli.com. Chuck Ocelli. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning, Maria. Well, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I've got to laugh first. Why do I got to laugh first? Because, you know, if, if you don't, you, you might check to see exactly which reality you're in. It, it's a very strange time. I don't have a reality TV show. I do have my radio show, which I do usually five nights a week, but I'm on break this week. Uh, uh, because, listen, you can't burn yourself out which uh, you and I discussed before we went on air. But anyway, <laughs> let's let's have a good time with the bad times that are rolling because uh, somebody needs to, right? Well, listen, I, I got to tell you this. I'm looking forward to covering the next year of politics because I think all we're going to see is one lawsuit after the other, and I'm going to enjoy watching the downfall of this criminal administration, all of them. And, uh, you know, I'm very happy with all these young women and new women, Muslims, Native Americans, you name it, gays, bisexuals, this, that. I am so thrilled with them because I think they're the only ones to take on the old order of the Democratic Party, which also needs to go. <laughs> so even though, you know, everybody's rah-rah, sis boom barring, you know, Nancy Pelosi, this and that. We need young people, young blood in office, and even Obama said that this week. Uh, so I'm kind of excited because his Trump's elevator is going down. See, now I wish I could share your optimism. <laughs> because <laughs> it, this is the thing. I, look, I love the fact that there is some fresh blood, a different spirit coming into the situation. This is what's necessary, right? Uh, you're never going to have innovation by just, what, dragging out the same guys who are half asleep and really just completely stuck in their own ways and probably not even sure what year it is in a couple of cases. Mm. You know, who's who's shaking and who's actually completely coherent is the guessing game. you got to play while watching C-SPAN. No, I, I, I want to see these young people in there, too, but... Do I think that we're really looking at a time when this administration is going to go down? Sadly, when the opposition is partially made up of a Nancy Pelosi, who, uh, uh, look, if I'm to choose my poison here, I don't know, poison is poison. Nancy Pelosi is part of the, the Democratic old order where, you know, see, here's the bad thing. Just because someone is a woman doesn't necessarily mean that they are absolutely, well, you know, uh, without, uh, with, without compromise or without corruption or anything else. You know, not every woman is perfect. Uh, let's not forget that. And Pelosi, to me, is just part of the same old disease. Maybe it isn't quite as ugly as the rest of the rash you get. But right. uh, it, it, is, it is still a brutal thing right. to well, look at the old order. I agree. And the, you know, the only pro with her, she's got 40 years of experience in government. So mm -hmm. she's not going to sit back and take any of Trump's crap, where Trump doesn't know shit from Shinola. Let's face it, the guy is adult. He's a total dolt. 
You know, I saw <laughs> some I yeah. saw some pundit on TV, some young twerpy girl, who said that no one should vote for Beto O'Rourke for president because he's uh, how the hell did she put it? She says he's unqualified because he he doesn't know enough, and and everybody of course ripped that to pieces. <laughs> Considering we have the biggest dolt, failed businessman in the universe, uh, you know, trying to start his Reichstag fire. And that's what I believe he is trying to do right now. Well, and, and, and that's the amazing thing. See, here, here's the big question, right? It, 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 and this is the sad uh, uh, moment of our times, which I'll get to another sad sort of like snapshot that really scared me too. But uh, you have either the idiot who has no concept of what's going on or the people that have been part of the problem for 40 years. Uh, you know, it, well, gee, uh, which, which authority am I supposed to appeal to, Maria? Mm, right. uh, either way. There, there's a big loss. Now, do, do I think they're going to take down Trump? No, because to take down Trump really realistically, to show that he's completely co compromised by all sorts of corrupt things, including foreign powers, you know, it might hit a little too close to home for way too many of these people on both sides of the alleged aisle. So I don't think they're going to take them down. Yeah, but don't you That's think it'll be fun to watch them attack each other? I mean, just look at this Hitler rally he's having tonight. I think he has an eight-minute speech trying to convince people we need this wall. Uh, and as soon as the Democrats found out that all the TV stations, fake news, uh, decided to cave in and give him that airtime, something they wouldn't do for Obama on Obamacare, uh, the Democrats immediately said, well, we want a chance to come on after Trump and do a rebuttal. So here we have both parties airing their dirty laundry on national TV for the whole world to see. Mm. You know, and there used to be something called the Fairness Doctrine, in which case they would have had to present the opposition on these, the, these cable networks or whatever existed at the time. The broadcast networks really were the only thing that existed uh, in, in full swing back when the uh, Fairness Doctrine was still around. But it, it, it's pretty interesting that these people want something that, uh, that they got rid of again a couple decades ago. Exactly. So. It's like everything they do comes back to bite them in the ass, like giving the president uh, you know, the power in, uh, I think it was 1973, to declare a national emergency and never defining what a national emergency was. So listen, I have said for so many years that I'm sick of listening to myself say it. This whole country needs an enema from top to bottom. And I think okay. we're going to be watching that hose go in this year. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. At least I'm going to make it a lot of fun on my show. Well, see, that's the thing. It is going to be entertaining. Uh, and, and at the same time, you know, it, it's, it's kind of interesting when... Chris Cuomo, this is what I was catching on, on the, the, the audio last night because I was having trouble sleep again. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to the audio playbacks of what happened earlier in the day. And this Chris Ruddy from Newsmax is on talking to Chris Cuomo. Okay, you want to talk about two people who just, you know, uh, 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 fake as if they, they really care about what it is they're oh, covering? I know. It's hysterical listening to it. I mean, I like Cuomo's style better than I do Ruddy's because Ruddy's is just, you know, right wing is right, right wing is right. You might as well just repeat it that way. And Cuomo's just, you know, let me just snidely challenge you as if I'm from the Northeast. Wait a minute, that sounds familiar. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 out of, it's out of control. What we have here is, is a big show going on and nobody really wanting to face the facts of what's happening, right? What, what is this big presidential address everybody's getting ready for tonight, Maria? Well, because he, he wants to declare a national emergency over this wall. I mean, let's memorialize this. All right. Okay? And, because, and well, uh, people God have knows. to realize that a national emergency and part of his national emergency is martial law. Oh, yeah, but, but let's memorialize this because, you know, in about a week, we're going to move on to some other... Uh, uh, Drama. Mr. F, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> It's 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 beyond it's beyond belief where we're going to be in a week. So let's let's just make sure we remember what's going on today. My. Uh, he wants to declare a national emergency because he's not getting the money for his border wall while the government is shut down. And here's the fun part: if we're really this concerned about the terrorists and all these horrible people coming from other parts of the world 
that are coming into the country and the mechanisms that have been put into place allegedly post September 11th are there to defend us, then let me ask you a question. Exactly who would be insane enough to start shutting down parts of the government and not paying the people that are supposed to be doing all that? All right. Hmm? Only, uh, only somebody working on behalf of a foreign government. Oh, okay. I was just checking because, you know, that was my thinking as well. Oh, okay. and, um, <laughs> it, it just, it, it's really, really crazy. And, and here's, the, here's the bad thing. Even based on the government statistics, which we know are always skewed, right. and we know are always there in order to push certain agendas forward, but even based on their own statistics, this guy, his people are out there trying to push bull. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Just absolute crap. I know. Every which way. Even Fox News is challenging Sarah Huckabee Sanders, for God's sake. I know. That was, a, sh that, that was a shockeroo, but I don't know if you got to see it. I, I only watch the snippets on YouTube because I don't have TV, and thank God I don't. Uh, but when she started that, they're coming in by air, by land, and by sea. I was pissing my pants, and she just kept saying it. And I was like, what, did she just learn the story of Paul Revere? Uh, and, and I mean, he slapped her down, basically saying they're only coming in from the airport. And meanwhile, we've got no TSA agents. The pilots are up in arms. Uh, you know, if, listen, I, I haven't flown in nine years, don't intend to. Uh, but the lies that they spew to, and just on something that was just made up as a talking point to keep the uh, adult, the mentally damaged man, who's president, on task to talk about immigrants. And now it became real to him in his make-believe world of hallucinations from either Adderall sniffing or his Propecia drugs have finally whacked his brain. Or possibly late-state uh, syphilis. Yeah, yeah or late any, of, any, any and all of the above. Uh, <laughs> so when he, you know, he's so, he's so trying to kowtow to his... Uh, to his base, which is shrinking every day. But the thing I look at is, this is all even more distraction. It, that's all it is, is distraction from the Mueller probe, from his sister, the judge, getting investigated now, to his whole family, to his lawyer that used to represent the Trump organization being arrested. Uh, you know, all these cases that are coming up against him, you know, it's just his way of trying to distract people. Besides the fact he's an egomaniac and likes to see himself on TV because his mother must have told him he was handsome. But then if you looked at his mother, it's understandable she'd try to tell him he was handsome. Well, look, every mother's got to do something with the kid. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Tell him. <laughs> I told my kids the truth. I always told my kids the truth. I told them when they were fat. I told them when they were this or that. But the bottom line is, you know, my kids could be a lot of things, but at least they're good looking. And, you know, and I've told my son, you don't know how many beatings that face saved you as a kid. So... <laughs> No, uh, listen. For, for for the record, of course, your your, your biological children are good looking kids. That's for sure. But uh, anyway, mo moving forward, <laughs> the, uh, the 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 interesting thing here is, yeah, it is all about his ego. And and the fascinating part of this is that there is a contingent out there that's willing to back this nonsense, right? It's like Huckabee Sanders is is too funny because she just backs whatever he says and just bulldozes through regardless of what the reality is. It's funny, by land, by sea, by air. Yeah, it did remind me of that, and I'm like, well, gee, what did you do, go to third grade and sit in on a class? Because right. that's about what it sounds like. Anyway, <laughs> the, the, the reality is as follows. Even from our homeland, you know, near Gestapo-type people, you know, they, they captured less than 10 individuals Six. that were on the terrorist watch list Six, that came month. through the southern border, right, right. in the past year. All right. Six, right, now, actually, was now, six. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, six, but, right. well, you know, depending on how you stretch that past year, right, Right. okay, it, it could be, let, let, let's, just, let's just give them a couple and say 12. 12 people got through, let's just imagine for a minute, <laughs> okay, right. that they captured, uh, that were on the terrorist watch list from the southern border, allegedly. Okay, that doesn't even mean they're terrorists. It just means that they were, for some reason or other, marked as possible problems, right? Um, so 12 people in a year. <laughs> right. For all we know, Al Gore could have been one of them. He was on the terrorist watch list. 
Uh, there you go. Look, and, and land, sea, and air. Okay. <laughs> right. So people are saying if they're coming in through the airplanes, why aren't we building a ceiling instead of instead of a wall? You know, I saw a cute meme today on Facebook. Somebody took Sarah Sanders, dressed her up like Paul Revere, and wrote those words by air, by land, and by sea on it in big letters. I was cracking up. <laughs> One thing I have to tell you is there's a lot of really creative people in America, mm -hmm. and this administration has brought out so much artistic creativity that I'm, I enjoy so much the cleverness of what some people can put together in nanoseconds. Oh, no, it's beautiful. I, I, there is no way. Even though I can uh, occasionally come up with an interesting phrase, there's usually somebody who has rendered it in an artistic fashion and has already figured out a way to post it to social media. So, right. look, there, there are creative people, that's for sure. And, uh, but, but the funny thing is, it is such a saturation of stupidity. I know. You know, this isn't like uh, when Reagan was in office and occasionally there was something that was just really funny that would happen because, listen, he was out of his mind. Right, he was, his, uh, he was brain office. dead too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so there would be funny things that he would say or miscues right. or whatever. But uh, this stuff is coming so fast, so furious, and they feature and they feature him on every single news broadcast. I guy. know, it's Trump 24-7. He sucks all the oxygen out of the planet. No, right. let alone just the room out of the planet. And they just keep caving into his ego. Listen, the TV stations, number one, are probably scared to death of him. Number two, they probably see this as this is a great way to get ratings. You know, let's put both sides on and let them duke it out. You know, who didn't see that, uh, that uh, meeting between Chuck Schumer, Nancy, and uh, Trump where he said, I'm going to own this. You know, this will be my shutdown. Who hasn't seen that? You know what I mean? Right. So for well, them, see, this is great ratings. But to the rest of the world, think about how embarrassing it looks for the United States. Well, see, the amazing part is because you only catch this stuff from YouTube and I, and I listen to audio streams. The, the amazing part of this um, is, is that while they're sitting there and telling you exactly how specious the facts are, exactly how ridiculous this is, exactly how... Frightening this should be to somebody who believes that the government functions, you know, in a normal fashion or anything like that. Right. Um, they go to a commercial break, and what do you see already? Commercials that say, support the wall. Right. I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. Yeah, like, Trump has his own commercials now. Right. You, no, he, but he's got a commercial for everything, you remember. During the whole Kavanaugh thing. Uh, immediately it was like, you know, call people and tell you tell your representatives that they need right. to tell your senators that they need to confirm Kavanaugh. They were running this on CNN in between the Kavanaugh debates. Look, this guy is nothing more than another piece of entertainment as far as these people are concerned who has uh, assisted them, really. The news networks were not doing as well uh, uh, previous to early 2016. Mm -hmm. They just weren't because they didn't have the... You know, I, look, I don't, I don't say things like this very often, but they didn't have the shit show that this guy is. Right. Okay. To to feature every single day, twenty four hours a day, and you know what? When you get tired of somebody telling you academically exactly how foolish, ridiculous, illegal things are, here is somebody else we're going to bring you on. And you know what? Pick an ethnicity. We'll stick them in there, and they can tell you how racist he is. And then right. after a couple hours of that, you know what we'll stick in here is somebody who breaks down and analyzes the 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 uh, the henchmen that are behind him. Right. Well, and people, exactly look, what's wrong with them? People you have know? to realize, Chuck, TV, the TV news is nothing but mind control. Whether you're left, right, in the middle, doesn't matter. It's mind control. And well, see, people point, still don't want to have an, an independent thought of their own. And they need but, to start with some right. serious critical thinking right away. The key to what you're saying right there, okay, is this. Now, I just gave you, they, they got all these different sort of diverse sounding programs, right? Mm -hmm. The key to what Maria just said, guys, is this. 24 hours a day, although it's supposed to look like opposition, who's in your face? Who's being analyzed? Who is the most Trump, important Trump, person Trump, in the Trump, world? Trump, 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 Trump. So, yeah, so what's the overall message, right? Right. Right, exactly. But, you know, it is interesting, and I have noticed it. I've noticed it today uh, and yesterday, is you are noticing less supporters of Trump on social media. So people well, yeah. are starting to wake up. The coal miners are pissed. More coal mines have been shut 
in the two years Trump's in office than the whole eight years of Obama. They're starting to realize he lied to them. They're losing their food stamps. Uh, you know, they're not getting paid. They're seeing the, the ripple effect from his ridiculous uh, shutdown. Uh, so, you know, listen, it's just a matter of time. You know, yesterday on my new show, I was covering the protests that are going on in Belgrade and the ones that are going on in Paris, in case people think those ended, they haven't. And the oh, fact yeah. that why isn't the media showing you that? Okay. Why aren't they talking about it? Because they're afraid if Americans see that, they might actually catch the hint and take the ride. Well, and that's the thing, is that they have actually successfully caused the government to move. Right. This is something that Americans have not been capable of doing. And, and listen, uh, no, no offense to any other generation, but for those of you that take, oh, the Vietnam War, shut up. <laughs> because you, you, you started in 1965 with that protest and, oh, I don't know, the Vietnam War ended officially in 1976. That's quite a slow burn. You didn't affect a change in hours, in weeks, in days of stepping to the streets. There is a big difference between that and what's going on now. When it, when it came to civil rights in certain areas, there were overnight effects. There were immediate effects, right. but, uh, but, but when you talk about the anti-war movement or anything else that existed basically after 1966, you, you, forget it. Right. It's over. It became non-existent. Well, Nixon crushed that uh, anti-war movement uh, with yeah. his bullshit war on drugs, you know, well, the war on drugs and, you know, tune in, tune out, you know, Leary working for the government. Everybody thought, you know, Tim Leary was some kind of hero. He wasn't. Uh, you know, got everybody to drug out and drop out and not care. Uh, and I don't think that Americans have ever recovered an anti-war effort because we've been in war the, you know, 90% of the years America's been in existence. Right, right. And, and you know, the debates about whether we're supposed to be here or there. See, that, that's the other thing that went on in the, in the mix, <laughs> midst of this melee is uh, what about the withdrawals from, uh, you know, from, from uh, uh, you know... Uh, what, Syria. What Syria, but he already walked that back. Yeah, no, we walked that back, but he also told them in Iraq, no, we're not leaving Iraq, although he right. said elsewhere we're leaving Iraq, right. we're going to get out of Afghanistan. Uh, oh, by the way, the Soviets were there, and they, they were good when they were there. You know... <laughs> right. He walked backs on everything he does, because don't forget, Bolton... Uh, had to have a meeting with uh, Netanyahu where, you know, let's face it, Israel controls Congress and runs this country. Uh, and it's going to be fun to watch these Muslims and other women that came in office not kiss Israel's ass. Uh, and yet yesterday, you know, with the shutdown in full bloom, what did the Democrats and Republicans vote on? They were voting on a bill to stop the boycott movement against Israel. <laughs> Okay, so, I mean, come on, who runs this country? Yeah, yeah, this is, this is the amazing thing, is that uh, business as usual is going to continue, except it, it's just not really going to be any of the business for you and me. <laughs> no, the, we and, get I mean, the business. No, we'll be the ones getting the business. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, you know, w w why are we in this situation where we don't have a government functioning, but let's worry about the Israeli boycott. Exactly. What, what, exactly. What is going on? <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I'm sure you read about that teacher that lost her job because she refused to sign a pledge not to talk about the Israeli boycott in our school. So, I mean, this is, you know, 22 states already have laws in place for that. And this is what they were voting on. So, you know, listen, in the 70s, Israel bragged about controlling the U.S., controlling our news, okay, uh, you know, spying on all of us. So this is nothing new. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, now they've got a perfect puppet in office because he's as dumb as a rock. Uh, and he's very easily manipulated, both by Putin, because it's, you know, he was pro, I guess he's pro Russia's, was pro Russia's attack on Afghanistan. Uh, and he'll do whatever he has to do to stay in front of the camera. That's all he cares about is being in front of the camera. Well, and, and, you know, the sad thing is that there's actually a debate as to whether, you know, uh, the network should have carried this nonsense tonight, uh, where we're going to get a speech where he's going to tell us that really bad, bad hombres, of course, are right. coming from the southern border, and we got to be careful of that, and it's a national emergency. 
which is kind of funny because even the government that he's supposed to be the head of is saying that, first of all, immigration is down. Right. Uh, secondly, when you compare the, the, the concept of the violent criminal, well, I don't care if it's one person. This is the new defense now, by the way. Mm. Uh, the, the idea that, you know, there's these violent people that come in, and then what do you do with these illegals that commit crimes and therefore, uh, you know, are, are dangerous and all that? Statistically speaking, right. even taking a look at how many in a percentage versus what it is we think we have here or anything else, it's like nothing compared to the people that are already born here that commit murders, rapes, whatever right. crime, pick one. And he never has anything to say about the serial shooters that are always white male uh, fake Christians and probably Trump supporters. You never see him come out on that. But, you know, looking at the long list of investigations that they're going to now do, uh, I was even happy to see that they're going to investigate FEMA's response to Puerto Rico. Well, I mean, it really looks like they're not going to leave too much out. <laughs> see, but, but here's the thing. A bunch of investigations in the House that uh, are then handed over to some other body to go ahead and go after people to do things about. Yeah, but a lot of these investigations are outside investigations. You look at, no, you know, I, you look at New York, you know, New York's suing him and investigating him separate of the government. Uh, you know, uh, there was, uh, I'm trying to think that Russian uh, attorney that was at the meeting in Trump Towers was charged today, but she wasn't charged by this administration. She was charged privately from, from New York, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's ways of they all have to pay. And, you know, whether he, I, I don't believe that, you know, impeachment's going to be the answer because I remember how long that takes. Mm. Uh, but, you know, I, listen, I had one cheerful thought this morning. I said, wouldn't it be great if Trump shows up on TV and resigns tonight? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I would love to see that. That would be, that would be great. Although I'm not sure if, if Pence himself wouldn't be just as dangerous, uh, uh, less embarrassing, but just as dangerous. You know, well, he's, this guy actually yeah, believes he's, in something. Right. Well, Pence is spewing the same lies as Sarah Sanders, says uh, Christian Nielsen at the Homeland Security. I thought those two women were supposedly getting fired or resigning. Why are they still there? <laughs> Because, you know, you know, look. Because they can't find this, anybody willing to take their jobs. Nobody wants to work for this administration. They know it's but, the death blow for their career for the rest of their lives. You see, you beat me to it because I was going to tell you that the other thing is, where, where else are they going to work? No, they're uh, unhirable for the gonna... rest of their lives. <laughs> oh. As they should be. You know, but but then again, look, there were people that survived the Nixon and Ford administration that uh, stuck around for a long time, like a guy like Dick Cheney. Uh, you know? What did you think about Christian Bale uh, thanking Satan for helping him portray Dick Cheney in the movie Vice? <laughs> that, that was priceless. <laughs> and then Cheney's daughter has the nerve to come out and slam Christian Bale and defend her father. And every time I see that, I post, if your father is a war criminal, torturer, and the architect of 9-11. You know, people want to forget about all that. Uh, so when he said thank you to Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role, I thought that was great. Well, who else are you going to thank? I mean, Karl Rove? Well, you know, maybe. Uh, but <laughs> Even Satan is mild compared to Cheney. <laughs> uh, no, I know. it. See, that's the thing. And, and when we take a look at... See, now, this is the other thing that concerns me. And I, I, I feel as though it's being missed. A lot of people do not necessarily uh, understand where these ideas are coming from. Because Trump is incoherent. But his ideas do appear to have a coherence of, of chaos to them, right? So a lot of people want to know who is the brain here. You know, like Karl Rove, I just brought him up, was uh, seen as, as George W. Bush's brain, right? Right. And, uh, uh, wow, it, it's interesting how that guy seems sane, even though he was another war criminal Absolutely. and everything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I understand Stephen Miller, the reincarnated Nazi, is writing Trump's speech for tonight. Yeah, but see, Stephen Miller, I don't think, has the sophistication 
to do a lot of the things that are seeming to come together as an agenda here. It, it, it's interesting to watch the chaos. Even the chaos is planned. Some people state that, that, that Steve Bannon has still been an advisor, regardless of whatever the public you know display right. is. Uh, some people speculate, and this would be my speculation, that uh, Roger Stone has not stopped advising Donald Trump because this is the only thing that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Given what we're watching being pushed in the public, the intentional distraction, salaciousness, nonsense, uh, you know, the, the direct interference with things. Yes, yeah, shut down the government. Who cares? All of these things going on, which, by the way, you know, speaking of classic comedy, this guy says he understands what it's like for people to have to adjust to not having a paycheck. Yeah, right. And most of these government workers make 500 bucks a week. Okay, people that yeah. make 500 bucks a week. Listen, I have reported this on my show ad nauseum that most Americans do not have $500 in the bank in case of an emergency. Yeah, no kidding. So how are these workers and all the businesses they're not supporting who are also losing money, how are they supposed to survive? To me, I don't understand why the whole 800,000 plus of them aren't all over the White House, okay? Why are they not, you know, out in the street with pitchforks? Well, part of the problem is gas money. Well, there's because, the other part. And, and the, well, no, really, seriously, I'm not kidding mm -hmm. you, because if you think about this, you know, the, the TSA agents are calling out, they're protesting. It's not a protest. It's a practical thing. You know what the problem is, Maria? Who lives near the airport? Let's just think about this practically for a minute instead of spinning it like these idiots do on, on the rest of the mainstream. Right. Who lives near an airport? Nobody. So either you need money for the bus or you need money for gas. Right. Okay, in order to go to work. Now, what happens when your paycheck doesn't come in and you can't fill your tank to go to work the next week exactly? Yeah, right. you're screwed. You're screwed. Uh, you're kind of stuck. You might have to call in sick and use up your days, huh? Well, a lot See, of them are actually looking for other jobs. Look, that's a possibility as well, but I'm just saying for the practical, immediate right. ripple. Right, right. I agree. That, where's the gas money? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Right. That's what I'm saying. So, uh, look, th this one isn't doing this, and this one's not moving around. Well, let's look at the practicality of it to begin with. If you needed every week to get your paycheck in order to put gas to, so you could go back to work for the next week, mm -hmm. also to, oh, I don't know, have your uniforms cleaned, or to pay your uniform service. Or, or have lunch to, uh, money. Let's not your, leave your out lunch, lunch money, money. Uh, all that stuff. Now you don't have it. Right. What are right. you supposed to do? You're supposed to lay down and die. But Trump says he can relate. The man yeah, who blew relate. over four hundred thirteen million dollars that his father gave him since he was a kid says he can relate with his gold toilets and his golf own palace that he lives in at Trump Tower. Anyway, listen. We have to take a short break. Stay with us. You can see we're really on a tear today. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Maria. I don't often get to talk directly to the listeners here on the Gary Knoll Network, but I felt like doing that today. I know a lot of you really enjoy my show, but you might not know that I do four shows a week over at my website, maria.net. So if you're loving the show you get to hear on Sunday... Come on over to my site and subscribe because I've got hundreds of hours of great shows on pretty much every topic in the universe. Uh, and that again is Maria.net, M-E-R-I-A.net. And now we can get back to this excellent show. Thanks. Hi, Maria here. And I have a message due to the pressure of the times we're living in. I'm calling on all students and millennials to get the education they need to fight the fascism taking over our world. I've made a special subscription offer for students and for seniors on a limited budget. For just $9.99 a month, you can subscribe and get that education. Over 500 hours of real education that's necessary to understand the world, the problems, and the solutions. Remember, knowledge is power. Together, you can change the world, but to do so, you must be informed of what's really going on and have real facts to support you in your endeavors. It's time for all the grandmothers to take a stand and teach the younger generation what their life could be and how to get there. Help me help you. One person cannot do it alone, and the guidance you seek is right here. 
at www.maria.net, M-E-R-I-A dot net. Your generation is the generation we've been waiting for, so let me help you. Thanks for listening. Okay, welcome back to Hell and High Water, or maybe we should call it Piss and Vinegar today, with myself and Chuck Ocelli. If you're not familiar with Chuck's show, uh, get over to ocelli.com. And uh, as you can tell, we're on a big tear today. Chuck, I want you to know that I walk in the gym every day, and, and now most of the people know what I do for a living, okay, even though I really don't make a living at it. And they'll always approach me with whatever top story's going on. And yesterday was funny because one of the old guys said to me, listen, I don't want to get political, but I want to ask you a question, all right? Uh-oh. Which, in other words, means I don't want to fight with you, Maria, because I know you'll beat the shit out of me, right? <laughs> so I said, well, what is it? So he says, this young woman, Alexandria, or, you know, or Cortez, uh, C- God, I got to write her name down so I can remember how she puts it in order. Ocasio Ortiz, yeah. right? He says, you know, I, I don't think she's that smart. He said, do you? And I looked at him and I says, she's super smart, I said. I said, are you kidding me? She knows what she's talking about. I says, and I'll tell you this, any man in the White House or in Congress that thinks they're going to take on a Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx is going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and then somehow the conversation devolved into whether sex addiction is a real thing or not. So it's always interesting to hang at the gym when people are feeling chatty. So, wow, sex, wait a minute, we went from Ocasio-Cortez to, to sex addiction. All right, is it real or not? <laughs> no. hey, do, do, do you wonder if that was connected in the guy's mind to begin with? No, because it was later on in the conversation after a few other topics came up. Oh, but you know how you know how it is, though. If that's the inspiration for the direction it took, you know, I'm mean, just saying. All right, but you know, when and, I pointed and, out to him, because I know he's wealthy, there's a lot of old men that are very wealthy at my gym. Okay. I, I said to him, you know, if you're talking about her tax proposal, a seventy percent tax on the rich, I says I'm sure you can remember that before Reagan, the brain dead Reagan, was in office, the rich were taxed upwards of ninety percent. And that's when our economy worked for everybody. Yeah, well, that's that's an interesting thing about the economy working for everybody, right? You know, the the point I was making before we went to the break there, regarding this idea that we, where, where where is the gas money coming from? Where is this going to come from? And exactly, okay, it's not just that though. The all of the businesses and things like that, all that stuff they're talking about, that's fine. But you know what's what's interesting to me is what's going to come up next, because first of all, all of these interesting things they're going to find a way to pay the TSA people. That's going to happen eventually. But you know the the pain of them missing out, right? Is uh, is interesting. I don't know how people get repaid or whatever else or government contractors. And and in one way, you want to kind of celebrate this because it's good. It's disruptive to the system itself, but. At the same time, a lot of real people wind up paying for this stuff. What I'm fascinated with is the idea that in February, you know, that's when there's no food stamps if this keeps up. Right. The people that are depending on the tax returns. Well, (laughs) now they're saying, (laughs) yesterday they said they'll send out tax returns. All right. So, you know, they're little by little starting to cave in, but... You know, it's just ridiculous. And the other thing is a lot of these people can't even afford to buy their medications. I mean, listen, most Americans live paycheck to paycheck. That's not shouldn't be a surprise to anybody listening to our show. No, but you see, that's that's the thing is when you disrupt this kind of stuff. And it, look, it, it's not like I want to celebrate the people that are working for the government. OK, but people got to got to make a living somehow. Right. All right, and and the thing is that when you do this over something as ridiculous as this concept of a wall, which we partially have already, which, you know, the big threat from the southern border and all this nonsense, it's amazing to me because, I don't know if you remember, but when we were talking about this last year, mm-hmm. I was saying to you the thing that they're making the point out of now, which is, wait a minute, don't most of the people that seem to stay here illegally actually come from, oh, I don't know, airplanes and 
places like that, and they actually arrive through just about everywhere else outside of the southern border. Right. Isn't that where they come from? And yeah, it's true. Well, but the southern border speaks to his racism. Otherwise, he'd be talking about a border between us and Canada, but Canada's white, so he doesn't have a problem with that because white people don't do anything wrong. Yeah, and you know what's funny is Canada is in the midst of starting to uh, uh, get their conservative people. I don't know, you know, occasionally I actually get video from their parliament up there, right? Have you taken a look at their uh, their, their House of Representatives up there? <laughs> Not really, but you know, maybe now that they're all smoking pot, it'll it'll improve. Well, you keep hoping so, but what's happening that's that's funny up there is, is that well, first of all, you know, there's places in Canada where they say they're out. You know, they've already tapped out the resources, but right. Um, but the other fun thing is that they're now going into the whole Obama shock thing up there, which happened here with the racism. And, and this is a strange thing. I don't want to go to this racism discussion, by the way, because I, I keep wanting to believe in, in the strangest part of my head that uh, that we should be past this. Right. But you know the whole, the woman that went up to, uh, uh, what was it, McCain, and said, oh, well, you know, Obama's a Muslim and he's from Kenya. And, she, and, he, and she, he says, no, no, I'm not letting you do that. Um, that was a real thing among a large segment of this population who I think are still represented in those steadfast Trump supporters that have not really abandoned him. Because mm -hmm. you said earlier, it looks like they're going to start to abandon him. It seems to me as though they haven't really moved because they don't take anything um, as real except the things that they believe to well, be Well, but with. once they realize <laughs> that their health care is actually Obamacare when they lose it, when they lose their food stamps. Let's face it, most of the people on food stamps and the government dole are in red states. Uh, when it hits them in the pocket is when it makes a difference. You know, my mother always used to say, you know, how uh, the dollar bill, which they, you know, changed in the 50s to put in God we trust. My mother always used to say, in God we trust, Till money goes bust. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and that's and that's a fascinating thing because uh, the 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 rhetoric from the right generally is that you know look Democrats use uh, food stamps and all these gimmies right. to uh, to buy themselves voters and uh, what do they do they give it to and if you get down to the impolite uh, sort of guy on the right he tells you that it's you know they give it to the brown people so that they got lots of brown voters one way or another that's what it comes down to. The truth about that is that uh, <laughs> the majority of the people collecting those benefits, not the brown people. Right. Um, <laughs> and Trump was surprised to find that out. He, he honestly believed that everybody that was on welfare were black. Yeah, yeah, he was surprised by it. But so were these people, which is amazing considering the fact that they live in communities that are run by this kind of stuff. Right. You know, your your local stores know exactly how much uh, uh, of their SNAP card revenue is keeping them open. Exactly, right? it's a big part of their revenue. Well, Walmart made a made a, a you know a multi uh, national corporation out of it, mm -hmm. for God's sake. So uh, you know, and, and and please, we could talk about them if you wanted to, but nah, let's not. Um, but but the thing is. The reality is irrelevant to some people. Right. They are lost in this in this never never land of wanting to believe for some reason that uh, this guy who is not a tough guy is somehow tough. This guy who is, uh, you know, a, a rich elitist who has no concept, no ability to relate to them, that he is somehow their champion. Well, they I love when believe. people say that Trump is fighting the deep state. Oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> and I say he is the deep state. Are you people this stupid? But obviously See, people are that stupid. And what about the slumlord that Trump and his son-in-law and his son-in-law's father's father are saying that, you know, if you're unpaid and, you, you know, government worker, just ask your landlord to give you a break, you know, put off the rent, you know, or go paint or do some work for your landlord, which is like indentured slavery. <laughs> now, honestly, a lot of landlords now are saying, we have mortgages to pay, too. It's not like we can just look the other way. We need that rent. Uh, and then Ben Carson, also brain dead. I think he was born brain dead. And some people say he's a brain surgeon. He, I wouldn't let him touch a hangnail on my foot. 
Okay. He decides that HUD, he's going to cut those people a break and release their emergency funding to pay their rent, not realizing that that fund went broke a while ago. Yeah, well, <laughs> surprise. I bet he can you know, relate, too. <laughs> well, well, you know, su surprise. The people that work for Trump don't know how the government works or what's actually happening. What a shock. I um, know. I just... I, I, I don't know what to make of it anymore. It, it just seems to me like, look, we, we know we can't trust the government, right? We, we know that they will lie and they will turn around and, and hide things and create stories and push an agenda so that they can continue to feed the corporate beasts that are there, uh, that are really part of the government, despite the fact that it's uh, you know supposed to be separated from it, right? Right, right. Um, you know, with the government of, for, and by the corporation. That's happening. But anyway... It's interesting that these people will do this, that uh, that, that somehow they, they will lie to you to make you think that they're there on your behalf, even though that's the way, you know, the original right. structure was. But, hey, let's not teach anybody about civics so they might actually get angry. Mm -hmm. um, right. It, all of this goes on. And at the same time, another layer of, of BS comes into play, which is this idiot who has no idea what he's talking about. But one-third of the people, no matter what poll you look at, a minimum of one-third of the people buy this. It, it, it makes me really, really sad and sick to my stomach to know that the fluoride has worked, right. that the GMO food has worked, that the chemtrails have worked, that we are literally right. living in the precursor to idiocracy. Well, the dumb, dumb, dumbing down of America was complete a long time ago. You know, and it's a, it's a sad thing, but, you know, if people don't want to think for themselves, do any homework for themselves or educate themselves, they're going to buy whatever the mass media, which you and I have covered, I've covered it for since I started this show, is owned by five or six corporations. Mm. And, you know, Fox News, I have told people, research it yourself, folks, is one third owned by Saudis. Okay, so what kind of news do you think you're getting there? We have a president who's in bed with every dictator on the planet. What does that tell you? My mother used to say, show me your friends and I'll show you what you are. Mm. So we have a wannabe dictator uh, in office and now he wants to do, you know, a emer national emergency. He is the national emergency. And I don't understand how he's not just dragged out of the White House in chains. I mean, whatever you have to do to get him out of there, he truly needs to be in a padded cell. He is indeed insane. And, and, and I don't know how people can't see that. Yeah, it, it, this is the thing that I wonder on a daily basis. As, as I watch, still I am surrounded in the place where I live by people that quite honestly think it's okay well because they're just they're whipped i don't know how else to say it i think that the uh the soul of the average american is whipped they're exhausted just trying to survive they're exhausted and they're trying to survive on crap that passes as food which it isn't fluoridated water which is another mind control drug which is the number one ingredient in prozac uh the chemtrails i mean they're out of control i mean the other day i couldn't even believe my eyeballs uh, and the lack of education. Let's not leave the lack of education out, all right? School prepares no one for anything except slave, slavery and, and, and indebtedness. That's it. Uh, so, well, yeah, you you can, a, you know, I have feel general. sorry for them more than I'm angry towards them. I feel sorry for them because they weren't strong enough to, as we would say in the 60s, fight the power. <laughs> See, but that's the funny thing. I, I, I was feeling sorry, but then when I'm realizing that uh, if this guy did not have the cheering crowds, if this guy did not have the support he has, there would be no reason to run him on TV. Right. There would be no reason to continuously cover him. There would be no reason to legitimize this nonsense. I don't think See, they do the it thing. for his support. I think they do it because he's such a bully, and they're afraid that he might physically, you know, or I mean verbally attack them. And they're all a bunch of pussies. So there you have it. 
No. Yeah, there's that. But then again, it's also a pretty fair business model, apparently. Well, but uh, look at the people. money they're making, all right? You and I are struggling to get by. You know, I just saw what my electric bills was for last month, and I was like, what? Right? So, but hey, I do live in the mountains, and it was freezing, but this is the highest electric bill I've ever seen since I've owned this house. Uh, but these people on TV, they're making bank. So they're going to say whatever their script tells them to say. I don't think any of them have ever had an original thought either. That's a lot to give up when you've got everything covered for you. Well, I don't care if it's Rachel Maddow all the way to Chuck Todd, okay, or anybody on Fox News, Shep Smith. I mean, they, they come out and act like, you know, they're going the distance, but they can't because they would cut off their nose to spite their face and they have families to support too. Yeah. You know, but true patriots, you know, you say, well, what's more important, my current life or the future of this country or the future of this planet? You know, years ago, I had this guy on and he had written a book, put together a book of all Thomas Jefferson's quotes in chapters on in different topics. When I got the book, Chuck, I thought it was going to be a real snorer. Okay. So one afternoon I said, wow, I could really use a nap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this book this guy sent me on Jefferson quotes. I figured for sure it would put me to sleep, right? Right. It wired me, okay? I couldn't get through the book fast enough, okay? When I had him on my show, I got the biggest compliments I ever got. And friend, I've had a lot of compliments from a lot of great people on this show. He said to me, if Jefferson was alive today, he'd be doing exactly what you're doing, Maria. He says, and your show is very Jeffersonian in nature. To me, that was the biggest compliment you could possibly give me. So here we are, Jefferson and Paul Revere, okay? Here we are, busting our asses to where we're physically exhausted, begging people for support. But you know what? At the end of the day, I sleep well, and I know when I leave this planet, my soul's intact, and that's all that matters. Well, see, that's that's the one thing that, I, that I'm I'm grateful for. Even though, I, I, like I said, I'm taking the week off at this point because I, I've gotten run down. Generally, I do this, you know, every night, uh, every weeknight, and uh, it's it, it's just as you know, just as not quite as fiery because I don't have you every night. But <laughs> I you gotta could. tell you, <laughs> this is the kind of thing that gets discussed. And and the thing is that uh, one one thing I can tell you at all times is at ease is my conscience because I know that I've spoken uh, as best I could uh, to the truth, to the reality, and uh, uh, to, to, to what is actually happening. You know, not, not, not sitting, I mean, even, even when I'm trying to have a little bit of fun, you right. know, uh, which, which, by the way, something that, that I never, ever want anybody listening to any of this stuff to ever forget is you need to enjoy some of your life too. All right. You know, uh, you can't let you can't let this this toxic environment become what it or the only thing you take in. Right. You got to take in some joys in life too, and uh, uh, occasionally you got to stop and maybe just take the time to breathe. Exactly. And that's what I'm doing. Exactly. And people have to remember, you came into this timeline at this time to witness. Okay. You came here to experience everything that you're experiencing. Basically, even Einstein would agree that none of it is real, okay? And if you can separate that, because Chuck, people have asked me that for 20 years. How do you do what you do and still function? And I'm like, because I know none of it's real and I'm enjoying the game and I, this is my part of it. I just feel like I'm a visitor. You know, I don't know if you watch that show, Travelers, on Netflix, uh, but they're basically visitors from the future, uh, and, and I've always felt that way. And it's like, I'm just here to observe. You know, I would say you're here to experience. But the bottom line is you chose to be here. So you might as well have some fun while you're here too. It's not all, you know, it's not all hellfire and damnation. No, but it is, but it is hard sometimes. Of course it is. The soul gets tired. You know how many of my clients and friends will say to me, you know, I always feel like there's something missing. You know, their lives could be going great, but they'll say, I just feel like there's something missing, like I have a hole in me that I can't fill. And I say, well, that hole is a desire to go home. That's just the knowledge that none of this is real and this is not home. Mm -hmm. And once they get that, then they're okay. They can move along, okay? Uh, but, you know, even Napoleon Hill said, do everything as if it really matters because it does. But then he added, in the end, nothing matters. 
Well, there you go. I mean, what, what else can be said? And as much as people might think that's contradictory, it actually makes perfect sense. All right. Well, you know, certain things you really don't get until you're of a certain age. And uh, I will tell you this for all the people clinging to their youth, thinking that life ends after 40. Every decade gets better and better. You get better and better. And uh, there you have it. Anyway, Chuck... I guess we'll uh, we'll be we'll be talking about what the madness that can, that ensues between this month and next month. And I also want to tell you that I, I hope you don't mind when I drop in on your show. Oh, never listen! I love that. That's why I, I said uh, kind of snidely there. I don't have you every night. Oh, I don't. Asian. I don't want you to think I come on your show and try to suck the oxygen out of the room. <laughs> Never. I Listen, I love it. Uh, Maria, every once in a while, will call in live because I do my show live and, and it, most of my shows are free. Uh, but I do my show live. And the thing is, uh, every once in a while, I get a surprise phone call from the one and only Maria Heller. And uh, I love it because it's it just it, it reinvigorates the entire discussion. <laughs> well, I just want you to know, just fall in. I don't even know what you're talking about, what's going on. I just say, oh, Chuck's alone tonight. I'm going to call in. So, yeah, and it doesn't matter. She, and, and the, the hysterical thing is, even though I know you weren't listening, it sounds like you were listening. Uh, wow. Well, <laughs> great. I must be in tune. <laughs> Well, Chuck, thank you so much. Enjoy your week off. Take care of yourself, because if you don't, no one else will. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Chuck Ocelli. Take, check out his work at Ocelli.com. Support the very few voices that are left that are actually on your side, whether they've left out of disgust because they actually had to get a job or because they were killed or died, just uh, the few that are left need you. And uh, I, I'm always very grateful to every one of my listening audience. So uh, just remember, <laughs> what looks real isn't always real. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for listening and supporting The Maria Show. Tell others what you learned today. Knowledge becomes wisdom only when it's shared. Encourage others to subscribe today. www.maria.net Often imitated, never duplicated. A world of information all in one place. www.maria.net Always ahead of the curve. Always on your side. Get active or get radioactive. Subscribe today.